Hello sunshines and welcome to Devaliant to Play as Astrologaster by Niam Niam. This game was part of Itchio's bundle for racial justice and equality. If you would like to play the game for yourself, check out the links in the description below. Are you fascinated by the stars and medieval medicine? Then this historical visual novel is for you. Now without further ado, let's get started. Warning. This video features talk of medical advice that should in no way be used unless prescribed by a licensed medical professional. This game is just for fun and historical education purposes only. Discretion is advised. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This poor man. Good day, Mr. Bell. I see here in my notes the last time you came to us for counsel regarding Mistress Burbage and her tender advances. Aye, and the advice you gave me to cool her down and that worked her treat. Since I've been putting them herbs in her potage, she spends so much time in the privy, hardly ever see her now. That is... Well, I am glad my advice achieved the desired outcome and Mistress Burbage is no longer bothering you. It's about another lady I'm come this day. It's a member of the audience who comes to all my performances and brings me flowers and sweetmeats. A mature lady. A widow, isn't it? Another one? <laughs> On my word, you are most ill-fortuned, Mr. Bell. Verily, are no young players safe these days from being <laughs> preyed upon by lecherous old ladies? Tis not all ladies, Dr. Foreman. Not this one, anyways. Emma ain't like any of the other ladies I've met. In truth, Dr. Foreman, we wish to be wed. I love her, innit? Ah, uh, then what is your trouble? Well, I've heard tell of some vexing things. There are them that say she has a heart of stone and only marries to get her hands on a man's money. Though I have none, and she be rich. But she has been widowed many times, and there's even a rumor saying she's had her hand in her husband's deaths. Oh, verily? <laughs> How shocking. <laughs> I, I must own to being a trifle shook by it, and maybe a bit excited as well, uh, but, but mainly shook, innit? Yes, yep. you are, for it is most frightening if there be any truth to these rumors. We must consult the stars and see whether it be wise for you to marry. <laughs> Should Humphrey Bell wed this wealthy widow? Yes. And what will become of him if he does? I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, Lady psychotic instincts regarding the amassing of wealth has changed. Yes, I would assume so. The rumors about the ladies are cruel. Mm. Uh, Humphrey can expect a pleasant inheritance from the lady as she is very rich. In time, if he keep, if he keeps faith, Humphrey will have children with this lady. Eh. Uh, death will occur on the couple's honey. Oh, dang. A uh, lady has a creative approach to marriage and is not to be trusted. Uh, beneath her gentle exterior, the lady harbors hidden motives. Uh, the rumors about the lady are cruel. Psychotic instincts regarding the amassing wealth have changed. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Bell, it has been my privilege to guide you over the years in matters of work and in life. Wisely, I hope, but certainly with the greatest sense of care for your well-being. Indeed, I have come to think of you as a father, I think of a son. It is a responsibility I have not taken lightly, and in loco parentis, as it were, I feel an obligation to... Sir, begging your pardon, sir, but I'm gonna stop you right there because I need to know in it. Should I marry Emma or not? The stars bless the match between you and this widow, Mr. Bell. Forsooth, she is, let us be frank, wondrous wealthy. Marrying her will make you a rich man indeed, and with time and faith, you will have many children together. I'd have to have a full lot of faith, though. My Emma is all of six and forty years of age. Ah, uh, Emma, you say this lady's name is? <laughs> Dr. Foreman, me thinks your stars ain't working true this day. I'll best make this life-changing decision on my own, innit? Ah. Was this your last time here? Ugh. 
Yeah, it was. Dang. Methinks I shall retire from the stage once I am wed. Mayhap do some charity work or something. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Good morrow, Mistress Payne. It has been quite some time since I last saw you. Uh, did you ever hear from the Archbishop? I recall your husband was intending to write to him, expressing your concerns about the Continentals. Aye, we did write, but he never replied. Oh. Not that I am surprised, mind you, as they do say that Archbishop Whitgift is a very idle man. Not to speak <laughs> of the unsavory goings on within the walls of Lambeth Palace. They say that in the great dining hall, the Archbishop and his guests do feast and carouse from dusk till dawn. And it is said that in some of the palace rooms, they indulge in fornication and sodomitical sins. Verily, indeed. <laughs> then, doubtless that leaves him very little time to reply to every... Truly, methinks being surrounded by such decadence and corruption of the flesh is likely to have made the Archbishop very hard. I. Bearing witness to so much vice would make a man very hard indeed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hard, Dr. Foreman? Insensible to the needs and difficulties of ordinary folks such as you and I. Verily, I do not wonder that such a hard man gave me no <laughs> satisfaction. <laughs> Which is why I am come to you this day, Dr. Foreman. Something did trouble me last night, and I would have you tell me what it might have been. I will if I can, madam. Mm. Uh, prithee, describe it to me. Well, at first was the noise of a boat that did awaken me. Mm -hmm. I got up out of bed and went to the window to see what was. As you know, on 4th Street, we are right by the banks of the Thames. In the moonlight, I could just make out a ferry crossing the river, loaded up with large barrels. And you thought it suspicious? Aye, indeed, for the hour was very late and the boat's lamp was not lit. I did not wake Mr. Payne to ask his opinion for... In truth, he has told me he wishes to hear no more about the things I see from our window. <laughs> so, I am come to you, for I can have no rest until I know who those men were and what they were doing. Who knows what foul deeds may be afoot in Lambeth Town? Mayhap the men I saw were Catholic spies, engaging in some manner of nefarious plot against the realm. <laughs> then let us see. What does God have to say regarding this boat you saw crossing the Thames last night? Was it some kind of elaborate Catholic plot? Or is there a more likely explanation? Wasn't there the... Oh my god. Is this going to turn out to be like November 5th? Oh no, but did that happen during Elizabeth's reign? I don't think it happened during James's reign. I don't... Okay, hold on. Mistress Payne is unpleasant and delusional, of course. Mr. Payne wants to change the world. That is the legacy she intends to leave. Uh, is unhappy with her children. They are doubtless grown up and now neglecting her. Uh, low to no contact? Yes. <laughs> Me too. Uh, the, go the goods the boats are transporting are questionable provenance. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. The information should be reported to the authorities, ideally a friend or acquaintance with some connection to them. The boat's journey is undertaken for evil purposes. The ambitions of disloyal, untamed forces may are at play here. Okay. I think she's already given me a letter, but I'm gonna go do this because, like, I don't remember when the 5th of November happened. Hmm. You did well to come to me, Mistress Payne. The stars confirm that the events you witnessed last night do indeed portend of doings of a most foul and sinister nature. I will pass your information on to one of my querents, whom I may not name, but who is a member of Her Majesty's Secret Service and reports directly to Her Majesty's Privy Council. I knew I could rely upon you, Dr. Foreman. You and I doing such important work together. We make quite the team, do we not? <laughs> <laughs> I would not say that, precisely. Do not be falsely modest, Dr. Foreman. False modesty is naught but the sin of vanity in disguise. <laughs> now, I must to home hasten to tell my neighbors. Forsooth, I must warn them of this grave threat and bid them keep a watchful eye on our local Catholics. <laughs> Pleasant day, Dr. Foreman. All right, she was pleased. Uh, 
okay. I shall tell my neighbours, Dr. Foreman, and I are rely on relaying information to Her Majesty's Privy Council. Hear ye, hear ye! Catholic terror plot to blow up Parliament Called wild. it, called Gun it, called it. Discovered in cellar! Hear ye! Dis disturbing reports just in from the Westminster that barrels of gunpowder were discovered in a cellar under the Houses of Parliament late last night. Sources indicate that this gunpowder pot was a Catholic conspiracy led by Robert G Catesby and assisted by a Continental by the name of Guido Fox. Uh, where is she? The fuck? Hold on a second. Mary Payne. No, it wasn't. It was July? To Christopher Marlowe. Tell Christopher Marlowe. Okay, interesting. Okay. But yeah, um, Guido Fox, that's what I was thinking. It's like, remember, remember the 5th of November. This is when they were trying to blow up Parliament. <laughs> good day, Mistress Payne. You seem in good cheer. That I am, Dr. Foreman. This day I am taking my niece on a lovely outing to see the cockfighting in Vauxhall. Ah, there is a cockpit in Vauxhall. <laughs> Aye, and a very fine one. It's been there for a and while, And I hasn't did it? think we need a nice day out to turn our minds away from that terrible affair of the Catholics plotting to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And my niece does so love the cocks. <laughs> <laughs> Doubtless, madam. Hmm. <laughs> and the gunpowder plot was indeed a terrible business. They say it was the doings of a group of young Catholic nobles from the Midlands, do they not? And that the gunpowder was ferried across the Thames at Lambeth under cover of darkness. Doubtless, it was the very same boat I did tell you about, Dr. Foreman. And of course, I must congratulate you for recognizing how right I was to be suspicious <laughs> of that boat I saw. Now, I bid you tell me, and do not be coy, Dr. Foreman. Was it your relaying of my information to the authorities that foiled the gunpowder plot? <laughs> Did you and I save England from the Catholics? Are you going to die? I'm afraid, madam, that I am not at liberty to confirm nor deny my involvement in the matter. Ah, oh, but oh my days. Are you ill, Dr. Foreman? Mayhap we are both troubled with the same disease, for my eyes do also twitch and prick with pain. <laughs> Aye, I did remark the condition of your mm -hmm. eyes. They are very red in appearance, and you seem troubled with a hacking cough. For how long have you had these troubles? Only these past few days, and mm -hmm. as well as my eyes and my cough, I do also find it a trifle vexing to breathe. Then mm -hmm. let us now consult the stars. What ails Mistress Mary Payne? Uh, Quarant is suffering from bloodshot eyes. Condition characterized by ready G eyes, really. Uh, Quarant's lungs have been harmed by the inhalation of noxious odors. Mm, possibly. Quarant is suffering from the green sickness, a disease that can provoke short-windedness owing to a build-up venereal frustration. Indicates a psychological factor. <laughs> hmm. Uh... Um, I'm gonna go with noxious odors. Ah, madam, your symptoms are occasioned by noxious odors. Uh, most likely you did lately inhale a large volume of smoke. Uh, mayhap your chimney requires cleaning. Indeed it does not, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> my cleanliness is unimpeachable. I have my maidservant scour the house from top to bottom every day. Ah, then I cannot be sure what has occasioned your... Hold. What is that acrid odor? Methinks it does emanate from your clothing. Madam, 
Have you been taking part in the anti-Catholic pogroms that Lambeth has witnessed these past days? The burning of houses and shops? <laughs> the lynching of priests from trees upon Lambeth Green? Mayhap I have, and what of it? You should be congratulating me and my ilk for keeping you safe. Uh, and for sending a clear message to those Catholics who would plot against our Parliament and blow us up with gunpowder. Madam, these Catholics are our neighbours, our colleagues and our friends. I beseech you to consider your actions, madam. Are not Catholics people too, just as we are? If you prick them, uh, do they not bleed? Aye, and their flesh does burn the same and all. <laughs> I fear I do not follow your reasoning, Dr. Foreman. Are they not subject to the same diseases, healed by the same cures as we are? And if not cured, then, alas, taken so soon, so needlessly. I did never have the chance to... Oh, mm. my sweet Avis. Can you ever forgive me? No. Something the matter with you, Dr. Foreman. On my honor, you do seem most troubled. Mayhap you should be going to consult with a doctor yourself. God keep you well, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day. Hmm. <laughs> Was pleased. <laughs> I guess that's everybody. Mayhap we make a list of which shops and taverns are Catholic owned. Methinks our actions could be a trifle more organized. This woman. ye! <laughs> London struck by plague. Playhouses closed by order of the king. ye! Oh God. <laughs> Be advised that if you are experiencing any of the following plague symptoms, fever, abdominal pain, lumps on your groin, oozing foul pus, send word to local authorities and a team of carpenters will be dispatched to your place of residence to board your pure house so that you may not roam about infecting others. Please ensure dead loved ones are ready to be deposited in the plague cart when it passes each evening. Corpses deposited on the street outside of collection hours will incur a fine of one shilling pretty steep. <laughs> God give you good day, Your Grace. How fare you this? Know you whether the plague will reach as far as Lambeth? Have you seen it in the stars? Ah, the plague that has begun to spread throughout London. Rest assured, Your Grace, if the plague does indeed reach Lambeth, the people of Lambeth will have me, Dr. Simon Foreman, at their service. My renowned strong water cure will doubtless be required. I bid you, read the stars for me now. Will or will it not reach Lambeth? Of course, as it pleases, Your Grace. Let us see what the stars have to say. Will the London plague reach beyond the city walls to Lambeth? Rumours of the plague reaching Lambeth are not credible. Okay. Don't like that. Death from the plague is God's punishment for our sins. Archbishop has nothing to fear from the plague. He has but an exercise has to, he has but to exercise patience and the threat will pass. It is the Archbishop's duty to stay in Lambeth and help fight the plague. The Archbishop must embark upon a voyage. Lambeth society may be peaceful now, but people can behave unpredictably during a grave health crisis. Yeah, no kidding. I wonder what that's like. All right, we are going to roll for B and C, because A is stupid. So one and two is B, three and four is C. One, so B. He has to help and take care of us, which he's probably not going to ah, do. Yes, uh, the stars are most clear on the matter. Very clear indeed. Then what do they say? 
Tell me! Uh, well, before I give you my answer, I would have your decision on granting me that medical license we spoke of on your previous visits. I am sorry, Your Grace, but I must insist upon it. <laughs> uh, I would gladly do so, but I find my hands tied due to various episcopal and doctrinal... <sighs> uh, as I see you are determined not to let the matter rest, I will speak true. <laughs> Some years ago, the Queen's physician, Dr. Richard Smith, did write me a letter on behalf of the College of Physicians. He warned me in the strongest terms against granting you a medical license. So you see, I cannot grant you a license without raising the ire of the College of Physicians. But uh, now, now, Dr. Foreman, doubtless you are thinking that a man of my position, one of the most powerful men <laughs> in England, should not be so easily put off by such a letter. However, and methinks you know this from your own experience, the College is a terrifying organization that will stop at nothing to get their way. One would be better off to find the Queen herself than the licensed doctors of London. For whilst our Lord God in Heaven may be merciful, the College of Physicians is not. I verily, I must own that what you say is very true. But mayhap I will furnish you with a letter of recommendation to the University of Cambridge. They may confer upon you a medical degree and thereby a medical license. I thank you, Your Grace. Now, prithee, answer my question. <laughs> Your Grace, I am sorry to inform you that Lambeth will not escape the plague this time. It will reach Lambeth before the week is out. God's mercy! Are you sure of this? Aye. It seems this plague is God's punishment upon us, though it is not clear in the stars what the punishment is for. Uh, debauchery, mayhap? <laughs> Insufficient burning of heretics? Uh, it is hard to know. No doubt such questions as these will occupy your thoughts in the coming hours and days, uh, though doubtless your priority lies with preparing your clergy and their congregations for the trials to come. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I must start preparing the household now if we are to remove to Sussex before the plague reaches us. <laughs> but surely you're not leaving Lambeth, Your Grace. Not in its hour of need. Worry not, Dr. Foreman. Uh. I will, of course, have my vicars remain, so they may give last rites to their parishioners. Oof, of course. Before you go, Your Grace, I believe you are intending to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, well... Indeed, I will reflect on the quality of advice you have given me over the years, <laughs> and if I judge that you have acted with some skill, then then I will have my chaplain draft you a letter <laughs> of recommendation and have it sent to you. Good day, Dr. Foreman. Do you know how to read and write? <laughs> Took my advice. Most ill. <laughs> yep, I will deliver seven on the lessons we might learn from Noah and the Flood. Ah. So I thank you for your recent submission of several letters of recommendation. I'm pleased to inform you that these letters, being sufficient quality and number, have been credited towards the obtention of a medical degree. Please find enclosed your license to practice medicine. John Corwell, Vice Chancellor, University of Cambridge. <laughs> Everyone surprise! <laughs> <laughs> you cannot board up my house! Tis not a plague house! <laughs> you are mistaken! I do not have the plague! Oh, so we're Let me out of here! Know you not who I am, you fools? I am Simon Foreman, doctor of astrology and physic! Fie upon those ungrateful wretches! Have I not always been there for them when they needed me? Am I not the doctor who risked his life to cure them during the plague of 92, when all the other doctors and their high-born friends fled London and left them to die? <sighs> Indeed, mayhap next time I will think again before risking my life in the service of the townsfolk, if this is the way I'm to be repaid! <sighs> and forsooth, if my deeds are so easily forgotten by the living, what chance is there for my work to be remembered by generations <laughs> to come? What will the world know of me once I'm gone? <laughs> I 
This speaks of quiet violence exacted by a genteel woman with hidden motives. Oh. Creepy. All right. I will be remembered for having given something valuable to a psychopath to hide somewhere. <laughs> Forsooth, how strange. Whatever could that be? A potion comprised of mo costly ingredients? Uh, my name will be mentioned in court during a famous legal battle. Interesting. It will be a long time before my ingenious contributions are properly recognized by historians. Uh-huh. My relationship with myself will change when I embark upon a voyage to wit my death will occur while traveling. Good angels will ensure the manner of my death serves as a testament to the intelligence, accuracy, and soundness of my methods as an authority in the field of astrological science. Interesting. I don't know what that woman is about. Um, probably about Emma. <laughs> I think she's the last woman that's still talking to us. All right. One and two is A, three and four is B, five and six is C. One! <laughs> it was a woman! <laughs> Come on. It seems I am to be remembered for being named in a case against two ladies who quietly killed someone. Oh. Meaning they poisoned him. How monstrous! If such unsavory tales are ever to be told, I pray they do not overshadow my accomplishments. <laughs> for my work is of great historical importance. And now that I have a medical license, not even the College of Physicians has the power to discredit me. But if I am to go mm. forth into the world to make any further contributions to the advancement of medical science, I must find a way to pry these wretched boards off my front door. William! William! Fetch me a crowbar! <laughs> Aww. Oh. Okay. Long ago in England, in 1592, there begins our tale, and all of it is true. Through the whole of London, new born, the great it spread, covering folking, weeping sores, and leaving thousands dead. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in misery. But one brave doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. Might have to be because he was too sick to leave his bed. Fall and made a plague, you had used it on himself. Then left his house to raise all Londoners to hell. Huzzah! 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 joining me as I played Astrologaster by Niam Niam. This was a hilarious way to explore a part of history that I wasn't very familiar with, though things like the failed expedition to find El Dorado and the Guy Fox debacle I did know about. I loved learning about the time period through this kind of lens. That lens being a choral puppet show about a red-headed prowler who deemed himself a doctor because he cured the plague that one time. The characters, the voice acting, the music, the art, 
all of it was fantastic. Even before finishing this game, I was sharing it with everyone I knew who would enjoy this. Though I will say I was a bit put off by the fact that this game made me woefully aware of how lacking my knowledge of this era actually is. I really did enjoy it. Though I'm not super keen on rooting for a serial stalker as the hero, but like I said while playing, this game may have brought out the worst in me. <laughs> But don't worry, I'm not going to diagnose anyone with evil digestion and force feed them rotten potatoes anytime soon. And for that, I give this 5 stars. Thank you for everyone for watching The Valiant to Play as Astrologaster by Niam Yam. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you know when the new episode drops. There's a completely free Discord server you can join where we talk about games and whatever else is on our minds. Please refrain from any hate toward me or the game developers. This review is just my opinion, and the devs worked really hard to make this game happen, and they deserve our support. Because anyone who just wants to diagnose everyone with evil digestion deserves all the support. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.